In this video, we are going to show you how to solve a two-variable linear programming problem graphically. The problem is listed on the screen, and it describes a furniture company that would like to maximize their profit from the sale of two items, chairs and sofas. This problem is somewhat helpful in that it also says that it's subject to specific constraints, in this case, carpentry, upholstery, and finishing. Now, some problems are not this obvious in terms of determining what your equations and variables are, but usually it's best to look for the objective function, the thing that you are attempting to maximize or minimize, in order to determine what the variables look like. In this case, our sentence on the profit down here says that it's based on each chair and each sofa. So we're going to make a note of that in our table just to remind us, and so that later on when we come back to the problem, we know what everything means. X is the number of chairs, and Y is the number of sofas. Using our sentence on profit, we are going to establish our objective function, P equals 375 for each chair, plus 450 for each sofa. Now, our s problem says that we have three constraints. We have uh, labor for carpentry, upholstery, and finishing. Now, we need to set up our inequalities that will restrict the amount of each of these variables that we can use. Chairs require five hours of carpentry and sofas three. So 5x plus 3y less than or equal to carpentry is limited to 5,000 hours. So 5,000. Our next constraint is based on upholstery. Chairs use two hours of upholstery and sofas seven. So 2x plus 7y less than or equal to the restriction on upholstery is 7,000 hours. And finally, finishing, each, finish, each chair or sofa needs one hour of finishing limited to 2,000 hours. So x plus, x plus y less than or equal to 2,000. And finally, to complete the problem, we have non-negativity constraints, and this just means that none of our variables can be negative, since we don't actually know what it means to make negative 10 chairs. Okay, once we have our equation set up, then we can go to the graphing program and try to find our solution. So I'm going to go to the website Desmos, and we're going to enter each one of our equations starting with the constraints. So 5x plus 3y less than or equal to 5,000. Desmos is nice because if you want the less than or equal to inequality, just type the less than key and then the equals to key, and it will give you the inequality you want. Now our variables are kind of big, and so we need to adjust the zoom until we can see the bounds of our constraints. Now I'm using the axes here as my bounds on positive values for each of my variables. One more. Don't zoom out too much or you won't be able to see anything that's going on. And then we enter the next constraint. So 2x plus 7y less than or equal to 7,000 and x plus y less than or equal to 2,000. Now this region here, bounded by 0, 1,000, this crazy point right here, and this point right here, these are the bounds of our feasibility region. This is the region where all of our inequalities are overlapping. Technically, 0, 0 is also a corner point of our feasibility region, but since we're maximizing, we know 0, 0 is not going to be our solution one of these points is going to represent the solution to our problem. 
To find the maximum profit, we're going to enter the profit equation, 375x plus 450y equals p for profit. By using a variable like this, I can create a slider in Desmos that will allow me to move the value of p between a set of values in order to locate the best profit value. If you click on the upper bound, you can change the value, and I'm going to change it to 1 million. Now, you may have to experiment on each problem to determine the best value for your profit. But if we slide it, we can see as the profit increases, we're still inside the feasibility region. When we get to this corner over here, we see that there's still more feasibility region available, so this is not our profit point. We can keep sliding it, and again, we've checked this other corner point right here, but there's still more feasibility region to go, so we keep sliding it until we get to this most farthest corner right here. And so we find that the profit is approximately $570,000. And the corner point that that profit represents is going to be this crazy point right here. Now, obviously, some variables can take decimal values. If we were talking about acres of farmland, it would be perfectly reasonable to have 4.7 Five, nine acres uh, or 482.759 acres of land. Acreage can be divided up into as small of unit as you want. Chairs, however, have to be whole numbers. For the purpose of this problem, we're simply going to assume our solution rounds these values down to the next whole value. It's possible that um, this small decimal might allow us to round the chairs up, but we're going to go with the safe thing and assume that we'll be able to make at least 482 chairs and 862 uh, sofas. In order to determine the exact profit at that point, we would simply put 482 into our x value and 400 or 862 into our y value and what we would end up with is $568,650 in profit which is very close to the $570,000 in profit. So we will complete our solution by stating the answer that we got from the graph. What is the maximum profit? The maximum profit is $568,650 and we are making 482 chairs and 862 sofas. In most textbook problems, the problems are set up so that you get integer values when you need integer values, but in the real world that doesn't always happen. And so usually uh, rounding down is a safe bet in terms of um, estimating the correct number of items to make when you need whole numbers.